my there God. We go. Oh, no, there went him. He's gone. Oh, Wade's out. Wade's Check out already. Okay, Technical Wade difficulties. Is, yeah, we uh, got Wade it. Is, Wade has waited out. No. He's waiting How away. Welcome to the pre show, everybody. Okay, now my audio is coming <laughs> through my headset. Oh, I heard an echo from somebody. How about now? I don't know who it was. Uh, you bit. sound good, Wade. Here's Corey. I Corey. don't echo. There's Corey. Corey is root. Uh, I, I don't echo. You don't echo. Do I? Hopefully. No, I don't no, hear any no. echo from No, me. it's because I had the echo went away. Me. It was me. I Because okay. I had the YouTube stream up because I couldn't hear anything and then I heard it on the YouTube stream and I was like, fuck. I talked to Ralph and he uh, said he's bailing uh, too. He's all like, oh, turkey time. I got to go buy 15 turkeys. <laughs> 15? My 15 goodness. Turkeys. He has a lot of friends, and we're not them. I guess that's not. A bit, that's a b- bit above average. That is a bit above average. <laughs> for Ralph, or just in general? He's, he's catering. For Ralph, that's actually below average. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Google oh, Chrome just destroyed my computer. I'm lagging on my side. Do we know if uh, Mr. Mr. Strand will be joining us? or Is this the quorum? Say, no idea. Allow me to check the weather. Mm. It's cold in South Dakota, so we have a chance. Mm. <laughs> Chances of strand. Mm. The strand forecast is cloudy with a chance of rage. That's, I, I would have gone with rant, but yeah. yeah. That's that's really Bud Patches' domain. I don't try to... Yeah, that's right back. I'm going to shut down and come back. Oh. Wow, it's that serious? He's shutting yep. down. He's shutting down. Oh. He's just waiting away. I already made that joke. I'm saying it again. Oh, no. That's not good. <laughs> I see your uh, camera doing the glitching thing there, Corey. That's Anderson just a VHS has... effect. Oh, is it? It's a nice little no. filter. <laughs> tracking. It's losing tracking. It's a, it's Yeah, it's the inter interlacing is off a little bit. I'll show a test pattern. Yeah, I There's don't know. Maybe a... I should... Should I downgrade to uh, to 1080 or to less? To no, no. There's that, something else. That sounds if like professional find... stuff, and we don't do that here. Okay, but I'm just gonna roll. I just like the VHS effect. Like I don't want people to see my face consistently. I want it to like glitch in and out every now and yeah. then. Do a whole max headroom. Th- there is a solution for that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, possibly, I had a conversation with the great BB King about this. Not the not the blues. Rocker, because I was gonna say, isn't he no dead. longer with us? <laughs> Ryan performed a seance. <laughs> oh, it was for the Ouija board. Halloween. He's like, right. he's like, look at my Twitter. Oh. <laughs> Drink your. It was Halloween oh. recently, so we tried something out, and we got BB King to come back. Nice. Nice. So, what do we Ben's cooking meatballs. Who's Ben's cooking, cooking meatballs. meatballs. What kind of meatballs? And also, is that for Thanksgiving or are you in like meatball country where they just do <laughs> meatball meatballs country. for Thanksgiving? Are they turkey meatballs? Like, I need more information. Are they, are, are, are you putting breadcrumbs in there? You can't just leave us hanging. Give us the recipe. Oh, I'm jealous. Wait, what do you have? What, what is that? Peppermint mocha. Oh, okay. Out of shot. I've been, okay. uh, I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming back up from a sickness, and uh, I'm you gonna were tell down you the truth. with the sickness. I was down with the sickness. Yeah, <laughs> drowning pool and everything. Uh, I took some some Robitussin this morning. Had never having taken Robitussin in my life before. Uh, it was the daytime stuff, and like I got up at like nine thirty. Like I took it probably like at seven. Got up like at nine thirty to go get some food, mm-hmm. and then I realized I was maybe robo trip in or something but i was i was not all there and i felt extremely lightheaded and i mm. called my buddy and i was like hey if we're gonna go to starbucks today you have to drive i can't eat, i can barely walk right now but <laughs> no, i needed the extra shot to uh did you misread okay. the like did you do like what like a whole like eight ounce serving you no know, i just like... took a chug you just a little, little swig a little swig oh, of one the little chug jug. one little you must one have little a big chug, chug. <sighs> maybe but you know I don't have a cough right now, so at least I guess that worked, right? But I also am not all mentally here, so I guess that worked as well. <laughs> that was well. Case. I'm not going to do that joke. That's too later much. in the show. We're gonna get <laughs> I'm never usually all that there anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'd agree with you. 
Uh, I need oh, to pull up the, the news. The news. Now, I know Bronwyn said she'll show up, but she'll probably show up late. Otherwise, this might be us. This might be the crew for Thanksgiving edition. I'm about to say, don't we start this thing at 4.30 or is this pre-show banter? I don't even know. What, I don't know what time or day it is anymore. Technically, we're supposed to start at 4.30. Yeah, we're oh. supposed to start, but we're waiting for John. So we're just stalling. Mm. We're stalling. Mm. We're doing behind the scenes stalling. Pre -show we're not stalling. behind the scenes. We're in front of the scenes. It says live right there. Yeah, yeah it's true. We are live. Live. Well, I had to go live. Otherwise... Restream would cancel the event on us because we didn't go live fast enough. Oh, so that's just like have not the, the best feature. <laughs> that is a little bit. It's of like, what do we do if they don't show up? We just burn down their house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I take it. I take it. You've managed backups before. <laughs> do you still need this backup? Silence. Overwrite. Burn it down. Restream la lags in my browser like every fifth stream for some reason. I don't know what it is. It's I rebooted. Your oh, it's not. It fast is enough. my. That's no, it definitely problem. is my computer. It, no, I. The, I will admit the internals are like four years old. Besides the graphics card, but everything else is like on its last leg. So, come next mm -hmm. year, it's time for an upgrade. You're gonna be watching out for those Cyber Monday deals. Uh, like, you know, I wasn't thinking about that, but now I probably should. <laughs> what is up indeed, Hoax Paragon? Well, we'll give uh, another minute or two and then we'll just start. I mean, the rule in college was depending on level of degree, it's either five minutes, 10 minutes or 15 minutes, depending on whether you're, you know, how many PhDs right. and all that stuff. So I think I feel like John has at least two PhDs in doing the news. So I feel like 10 minutes is fair. Absolutely. I'm he surprised didn't somebody hasn't given or deny him that he was PhD showing up yet. for the news today. Oh, he said he was coming to the news today? No, he didn't confirm or deny. Oh, so okay. I, I honestly have no idea. He went full FOIA on you? Like right. He pleaded the fifth. Pleaded the fifth. Also true. <laughs> John's having a DNS issue? Possibly. We've got a DNS issue, a do not strand. <laughs> that was terrible. I'm sorry. That's all I got today. <laughs> that was amazing, Ian. Keep it up. <laughs> I'm starting to develop a little Gorbachev thing here. This is this is should not okay. I do a phishing email <laughs> where I just should I do a phishing email where I just say click here to keep working and if you don't click you get three months of severance? Ooh, like is yeah, that, is you that totally too, should. Is that, is that too you much chaos? Totally no, I agree with it. It's so great. It's I, just I like got... hard line from the CEO. We're gonna start company name 2.0. <laughs> I got set one this morning was like sign up for free breakfast tomorrow, and I was like free breakfast and then i'm like wait a second oh they're not really giving me free breakfast and then of course it's all lies and slander and i already tried games. taylor swift Bye. tickets but the client wasn't a big fan of that one they turned uh, it down so taylor swift that's like a fifteen thousand dollar investment like, that's what i was well no it was, it was gonna be a fish it wasn't gonna be real maybe they well thought yeah it was too but political. if i would have saw that i would have like oh i'm gonna just buy it and then resell them like everybody else in the world <laughs> so yeah nobody's oh, giving those point. away it's too unbelievable. It'd be one of those things where the company has to actually find Taylor Swift tickets because their user base is so upset that they weren't real. <laughs> <laughs> I had a the friend over the week. I had a friend over the weekend tell me their internal red team uh, got them while they were at DEF CON by sending them a pixel perfect thing from their like web proxy that said, you've accessed inappropriate content. Click here to confirm why you did it and they're like oh crap i'm at defcon i probably did and they clicked on it and they're like ah you got fish i was like man that's devious <laughs> you clicked there, on bad there. things yeah i think there the is that, i'm gonna uh, actually go with is like a see the company handbook in box.com or sharepoint or something like mm. that just like basically you know there there is like that, that that uh documentary i saw on the netflix about the, the pepsi points things with the Oh, the, the Harrier jet. jet. The Harrier jet. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really curious to to watch that. 
What is the fishing like? What is that? Is it like if you detect enough fishes, you unlock a Surface Pro a three or jet. something? Your jet. <laughs> like, like what? What is the In Pepsi points for security awareness? Every fish you detect, that's five points. If you get to a million points, you become CSO. Congratulations. Here's your punishment. Um, All right, we should get started. It's 40. It's 10 past. Corey, you're root. You're the host. Okay. Sudo up, Corey. Sudo, sudo do the news. <laughs> sudo host the news. Sudo roll the intro. Roll the tape. Welcome to Black Hills Information Security talking about the news. Today is November 21st, 2022. We are joined by a star-studded cast of two, maybe three people, depending on if Ryan decides to hide behind the scenes or not. <laughs> we have Ian. Yay. Hello. He's flying around the screen wildly. And we I... have Wade, mustacheless Wade. It's I got, okay. I got like the five o'clock shadow going on a little bit. You know, mm. I didn't shave since like Thursday. I don't know. No, it's also, disclaimer, time. Wade may be on Robitussin and anything he says <laughs> cannot be taken as financial advice, legal advice, or any other kind of advice. And is it my own, be... my own thoughts, not my company's thoughts. No, this is Wade not is even his own thoughts. This is only. actually just the drug's thoughts. Robo thoughts. Even... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it is Turkey Week. We're on a little skeleton crew. We don't know where John is. But it's cold in South Dakota, so he's probably inside. Maybe he's hunting uh, turkeys off the farm. He's hunting turkey. <laughs> that would be amazing. I really hope that's actually what he's doing. So I guess let's just start out with Twitter. I mean, I feel like we there's just there's not like any really just, new. Are, are there any new the things? Fire. <laughs> did, did we talk about the email? Did we talk about the email? What about the email? The email, the the the. the um, ultimatum the ultimatum oh, email. No, we, talked we did about not that we did not talk about we didn't, that we didn't talk about that oh dude if I you would have got that oh, would it, i would have yeah. i would have quit i would have quit <laughs> for sure three months Wait, you're not ready to go hardcore no, so yeah are, is anyone here ready to go hardcore with news 2.0 or would you like to take three months of free free news 2.0 hardcore <laughs> that's right <laughs> so yeah like i don't know i i don't know what the plan was here to be like Hey, uh, everyone that was already thinking about leaving, here's a button that says you don't want to leave, and if you don't click it, you get three months of pay. I don't know. You know, you know how he was saying how like people it have was to a phone. poll, yeah, the Twitter poll, poll stuff, right? <laughs> well, he was the one who was claiming that Twitter's full of bots. Why do those polls make any sense whatsoever if I can control a bunch of bots and sway that poll at least to a point, right? I I don't I. I... <sighs> It's like it's like bot jujitsu. It's using his own bot logic against him. Yeah, the, I the, think the yeah, yeah. The cognitive dissonance there is is impressive. It's, it was I, I, I've seen the, the the button push meme where it's like <laughs> Twitter has too many bots. Twitter uh, Twitter can decide polls, and it's Elon Musk sweating, going, <laughs> <laughs> "Which one do I click?" Yeah, I I don't really know what um like what the plan was or like why. I guess what I'm thinking is he might, this might have worked in the past. Like it might have worked to like, if you're a space rocket engineer, you you can't like just go find another job. But like if you're a Twitter engineer, you can definitely go find another job. Yeah, it would have been um, a good time to fish Twitter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just really sad. I think the biggest thing that's sad for me is that the people who are stuck there are pretty much just the H1B, like people that depend on the job for their immigration status, probably. I assume. Maybe. I, I like this from Ben Ben Webb here, though, that Ghost of the Dog said at best. He's creating $8 Chan. <laughs> and I've been on there recently, and yeah. Yeah. yeah he's on creating where? $8 eight, Chan. 8 it's Chan? no good. You've been on 8 Chan? I have. Official. I've been on $8 Chan. Yeah, sure. So who are yeah, you now? Are you Who are you masquerading as on Twitter, then? <laughs> oh, me? Yeah. Oh. I, I thought about going full John Strand, just being John Strand. But uh, 
You mean role, male model John Strand or real yeah, John Strand? Go being male model John Strand, but pretending being being male model John Strand, pretending to be Black Hills John Strand. Oh. So it's like you're a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude, whole dude deception. That's really advanced. That's like <laughs> That's You're going Robert Downey I... Jr. level <laughs> Tropic Thunder, where he's like, he's doing the, it's like three levels, <laughs> and Leonardo DiCaprio is just staring, going, "We gotta go deeper." They gotta go deeper. <laughs> so it it seems like the numbers from this, like they've lost about seventy percent of their work ba- workforce or something. They lost their payroll department. Like people are saying, like I don't know if they're gonna be able to like send payroll out in two weeks like apparently this next pay period is already like good to go but like the next one is like what's gonna happen um yeah i mean i just it's just a dumpster fire i think anyone at least my opinion is anyone who thought elon musk knew what he was doing i feel like the the only way he knows what he's doing anymore is if this is his plan all along is to shut down twitter just in the most hilarious and explosive way possible like maybe this was like some mind games he's like how do i shut down twitter but I can't expensive troll ever. Right. I know. It, I can't believe that's actually what, uh, you know, his goal was. But that's the only way I can interpret it as anything but just complete egotistical stupidity. Like, no, I know better than anyone. Like, just kind of, you know, dropping the bomb and walking away. But there was a, an oh. actual security related story that we have here about oh. two factor for Twitter. Oh yeah, oh, he so, turned it off, right? And then yeah, or... so he unknowingly turned off the microservice that sends two-factor <laughs> pushes or notifications. So this is when he's like, "I know how to run a tech company. Let me go and uh, cut down some of these unnecessary microservices that we have. This is why we're losing money." And then, whoopsie, one of the microservices that was turned off was the one that sends two-factor notifications. What, is that what Honestly, the story is, or is this a... something different? No, that's that's the one. It looks like. Mm-hmm. Oh no, maybe that says 2012. So, yeah, basically, yeah, basically, uh, you couldn't log out if you logged out They're of Twitter. You were you were in trouble. Was it SMS or token based? This um, uh, I think I think 18th. SMS was turned off, but it might have been the whole service. Um, this looks you like a different story. SMS this anyway, use tokens. Yeah. So. <laughs> So okay, this is let's see. So this is a newer story. This is a well, maybe way this is old an update st- to an old story. Maybe yes, that's this what is that a, is. This, this is a different story. This is an update to basically a story from 2012. Um, the update specifically was. Can you go to the update? Oh, well, back up. Um, update November 18th. So they become aware that another researcher has identified the ability to turn off Twitter SMS two factor via texted stop command as a vulnerability. So I guess the idea here would be you spoof a message targeting, <laughs> um, like, t- you're you're saying, oh, I'm, I'm this user. Please stop texting me. <laughs> I don't know exactly how that works. Um, it must be a maybe an API thing or the way that they're handling it. <laughs> oh, look, we have a new guest on the news. It's yes, hello. Jeremy. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Hello. I am. I am to being a regular Twitter user here to talk to the people about polls. And how they they can trust all the users on Twitter, Corey. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so uh, should I reply to this tweet with my password? Absolutely, you can trust me. Look, I have I have verification. See, you know, <laughs> I, I I paid eight of your I paid eight of your rubles to uh, talk to you about how uh, all the different places are totally fine. Totally fine. You can trust everything that is on Twitter now. Yes, Elon is here, and he will save the platform. Okay, uh, uh, eight eight dollars to rubles. By the way, I, I mean eight dollars is four hundred and ninety rubles. That's a, that's a quite the conversion. Yes, it's right. That definitely <laughs> seems. This seems what, reputable. What yeah. um, I'm actually gonna yeah. go and sell all my stock. What company would you recommend <laughs> I sell all my stock in? Oh yeah. Okay. So if you're gonna do that, always always go into oil and caviar. <laughs> Absolutely. It's all any sort of viscous blackness. That is good. It's good for you. Potatoes and vodka may need that. Depending. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Little I, known fact. Little known fact. I can run on pure ethanol. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. What? Yeah. I usually. Yeah. I really want to know why it says and, snake oil back there behind your shoulder there. What, what's going on here? Oh, that's just when it's exotic. 
Yeah. Okay. So we use, okay. We use the snake Another... oil to to oil all the 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 Twitter bot. I mean, not the Twitter bots. No, there are no Twitter bots. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Okay. One last question. Um, yeah. can I have the <laughs> ransomware decryption key for my grandma's PC? Depends. Does she have four hundred dollars in Apple iTunes gift cards? Of course she does. Then, then of course, absolutely. Okay, because should I call it is legitimate support? business. It is legitimate business service. Oh, nah. should I? So I just call customer support and they just give me the code. Absolutely. Yes, you just so call right helpful. then and you t you tell them you spoke with Jeremy. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank okay, you so, so much, Jeremy. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go back down here and absolutely not uh, use Twitter to uh, destroy democracy. Okay. 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 See everybody. <laughs> Okay, you want to take me out to the stream there, Ryan? That would be great. <laughs> oh, he's gone. We, we've wow. we've uh, swatted the bot. Twitter is a <laughs> safe place to be right Swat now. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess uh, the only other thing I think, unless anyone else has any Twitter stuff, the only other thing that to me is kind of interesting is seeing all the exodus, where people are going and all that. We've seen the Inf InfoSec Mastodon. We talked about that last week. Um, there, there's actually a related story with that we could talk yeah, about. Yeah, that's with, yeah. Uh, so, unfortunately, passwords. Unfortunately, someone uh, at Burps or at Portswigger, which is the company that um, Gareth Hayes, who works at Portswigger, which is the company that makes Burp Suite, which is a very common tool that for web application testing, um, <laughs> had a blog post where you can steal passwords from the InfoSec Mastodon with HTML injection. Um, so yeah, it doesn't it. it that you don't need to bypass CSP. I'm not a huge web app person, but essentially I see this as as people move to different platforms, some of those platforms are going to have vulnerabilities. That's just the cost of doing business. Um, so this is pretty scary overall. HTML injection, um, what's the vector for that? I mean, if someone has control over a page you're visiting, if someone can, yeah, cross-site scripting can trigger it. Um, there's a lot of ways to get HTML injected into a page, so it's a little scary, but... Don't click the links. Don't click it's that links. easy. Links were a bad idea. This is just yeah. a really another another good reason to join uh, the InfoSec Knowledge Sharing Discord channel. Mm. It's almost like guy. we already have this with Discord. Yeah, it's really crazy. <laughs> wow. oh, Should we, we make like a channel problems? in Discord? Just, <laughs> should we just make a channel called Twitter and just like gives everyone a blue check emoji next to their name? And <laughs> I think we are, we already have that. The, uh... <laughs> Do we really? Yeah. If you look at the. Um, the community like guiders or whatever the whatever i am in there uh i, have I know a but mark well, next to my am i don't know what the but title see is. what we should do is we should take that and make a channel called twitter where everyone gets that <laughs> great <laughs> but you have to pay an eight dollar subscription fee uh, no i'm just kidding um, no 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 you're right we have to launch a poll to see if you get verified <laughs> no <Yeah. laughs> oh god I'll bring uh, the puppets Twitter. out again, okay? Uh, back uh, <laughs> back to the I back to the Twitter to? thing, though. I will admit, like the amount of documentation that the open source community kind of funnels, uh, like it won't even be like a description to something; it'll be a tweet, and it'll say, "Go look at this tweet." If Twitter goes down, there's gonna be a lot of Sigma alerts out there that need to be rewritten, or at least need to have better descriptions. I'm gonna tell you, and I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> Yeah, that's tough. I mean, I guess the, the moral of the story is if there is something on Twitter that you depend upon, might be the time to save it somewhere else or document it somewhere else. Maybe not on social media at all. Maybe you should just put it in GitHub, like where everyone else puts stuff. Um, so I definitely think uh, that that is worth a, a good thing worth noting is that that InfoSec community, you know, put it somewhere else, put it anywhere else. You can link to it on Twitter. That's fine. But just put it somewhere else. Wait. All right. What other news do we have? I had. We can. Yeah, we can. Tell, we do have some things from uh, Mr. Jeremy's region of the internet, which is the mm. ransomware region. Mm. So there's a Mr. new. There's a new ransomware data released. This is a uh, article on Dark Reading, basically just talking about some new ransomware data. There are three things you need to consider right now. This sounds like a ransomware campaign. <laughs> <laughs> the pandemic is slowing down. Why aren't well, the attacks slowing down? <laughs> well, we already determined that ransomware has has a you know PR and HR and all that good stuff. 
They have bug bounties. They have, yeah. They have so basically, bounty, this is yeah. all based on the Ivanti or Ivanti. I don't really know how to pronounce that word. Uh, ransomware report for Q2 slash Q3. They combine two Qs into one. Um, the highlights include 10 new ransomware families. Oh, is it like organized crime? Hey, it's Gambino's in the game now. They're sending <laughs> ransomwares. Um, so uh, 18 new ransomware vulnerabilities are missing from popular scanners. I don't really know what that means. Two new vulnerabilities are being actively exploited by Avos Locker and Cerber. Yeah, these are just like, I don't know. This seems to just like marketing fodder a little bit. Like uh, new weakness category, CWE is contributing to ransomware vulnerabilities. Yeah. So Got basically, this cool graphic that I don't know what it's supposed to depict. Yeah, I, I'm a real, I'm, I'm a Circle's little bit confused. Bigger. Does anyone know what is counted as a ransomware vulnerability? What, what is that? Because from my perspective, ransomware is just arbitrary code execution on any system. Like I, oh, here, here it is. Here's the pitch. I promise three things to consider. There's the pitch of the article. Okay, the three Ds. <laughs> Dip, <laughs> duck, <laughs> dive, dodge. <laughs> yeah, uh, data, domain expertise, and data modeling. I feel like data and data modeling might have some overlap. Um, yeah, I mean, not to just dismiss this outright because I haven't done a deep dive on the report, but I don't really know what a ransomware vulnerability is. I don't see what that is. From my perspective, ransomware is you get access to an organization you purchase it whatever and then you use that access to do whatever evil stuff you can do as that user i don't associate it with vulnerabilities specifically like i don't think of oh there's a xss vulnerability on a web app somehow that's related to ransomware i just don't see it so if anyone could fill me in on that please do but um it seems like this is more just kind of ransomware isn't going away i don't think anyone really thought it was going to go away but um yeah, <clears throat> right. I think Profitable the rest of it is line kind of, of business a didn't go away because things changed. Shocking. No, yeah. weirdly it did not. Right. What what we need to do is hire Elon Musk to run a ransomware organization. <laughs> do you think we could do that? Uh, I you know I would settle <laughs> just for some of my more problematic vendors. Um, <laughs> like they'll they'll remain unnamed, but you know. Uh, that would be fine. So yeah, I guess if you're if you're no interested in business level awareness of, you know, ransomware, check out that report from Ivanti, and uh, vulnerabilities are going up and up, <laughs> gains. What? I, I think it's more Avanti, not Ivanti. Avianta. Avianta. Why isn't it A V A N T I then? It's an Avanti. Avanti, Cadillac. Um, so, <laughs> Aviato. Aviato. <laughs> so uh, I guess we can also cover another ransomware story. Hive ransomware attackers extorted a hundred million dollars from over thirteen hundred companies. This is, uh, I guess, someone totaled up the numbers. Uh, <laughs> not really news necessarily, but again, this falls into the category of it's not going away; it's getting worse. A hundred million dollars is absolutely insane um this is based on some data shared by malware bytes um where they compromised 14 victims in september so september was a bad month for ransomware i think the really scary thing about this is i mean did you see the the vulnerability that they're using the proxy for shell like that's it, it is exchange on prem over and 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 over like this is this is like the, the the red zone warning this is like whatever it's like if you're running exchange on prem now is the time to exit the building like this is should i make a pop. pdf report that says every vulnerability is ransomware vulnerability and just publish it as like a q2 yeah. or q3 i update? will yes. i will point my thread intel reports at that all the time <laughs> whenever somebody is like oh this vulnerability i'm like oh here's a report over here that says that exact vulnerability is going to be being used for ransomware and it's just like, like oh we the, need to patch it now and it'll, it'll work the perfect. following it. the following cves are associated with ransomware cve 000 <laughs> through cve 9999-99999 okay good thank you yeah, excellent threat, threat intel received um yeah i, I guess 
I, I guess this kind of clarifies what a ransomware vulnerability is. It's something that's used by ransomware actors. So basically just a vulnerability. Great, great, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, Ian's point about it being incredibly ridiculous that these vulnerabilities still exist and are still being actively used, it's like ransomware actors are like, you can make $100 million from proxy for a shell? Hmm. Huh. Open to the Good internet. Good to know. Can't you- can't you just it's just purely scanning the internet? It's pretty easy money. Makes me rethink I, my career a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, but uh. I can't tell you the number of times I walked into my old boss's office whenever we'd see some criminally silly, easy thing happen that scored two hundred fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, what are we, what are, what are we doing? <laughs> like, we've chosen the right. Like, you go make this score, you take nine months off. You make the next score, you take nine months off. Like this. Yeah, I mean, I will say that it, you know, even if you're looking at it from a purely selfish perspective, the long game with ransomware is probably not great because once you make a certain number of people mad, they band together and they find you and put you in jail, or at least you can't use your money. <laughs> so, so, so of... we only, so we only target people who do, who people don't care about. Yeah, but the so... problem is they don't have any money. Right. There's so people it's, it's who there's 22. people who everybody hates that doesn't have much drug companies. Yeah. Drug <laughs> companies? You only you only like you mean cartels or the legal drug companies? Definitely the legal drug companies, not okay. the cartels, because they won't hey, come car- after you. And <laughs> legal cartel. drug company and cartel is the same thing. It's just yes, what's... you're right. You're right. You're right. Well, we're see, I was thinking because the, the, cartel- <laughs> the cartels have more lobbyists. That's right. all I was thinking. That's true. So, um, so Ben Webb put something up here that I wanted to touch on here. Some orgs have to maintain email on premise for compliance reasons, and though that is true, I am curious about the necessity to have the actual email exchange exchanger and exchange itself on premise like is keeping a retained and verifiable non-reputable repudiable anyway they can't be repudiated uh copy on there is that would that cover compliance reasons because it, it, at that point i think in reality if you're saying hey we have to keep this exchange over here because we have to keep email on prem <laughs> for compliance reasons, okay. But if they're saying we can't absolutely move it to the cloud for live email, um, I, I'd, I'd love to know what industry that is. Yeah, because I was about to say, yeah, me too. Yeah. Because yeah. we need to send John Strand at them. Be like, yeah. John, these I people remember, have to have email compliance. Right. So, okay. I remember yeah, I long ago in in my, my old job in uh, public education, this was a long time ago, but there was something that it was, it was like a law or something for you know, education that uh, the school district had to have their data on site, physically on site. So for a while, cloud stuff wasn't an option because of that. And I I would hope that that's gotten updated since then, because this was, you know, a long, long time ago. But maybe there's some places that have not updated their policies. Maybe obscure state. So, uh, I mean, it's two, two reactions. Number one, I don't think there's anything that requires it to be vulnerable. So fix it, patch it, update it. <laughs> Second of all, I, I, I will say that I have heard there are multiple c- cloud uh, organizations, specifically Google and AWS, that have specific offerings designed for people that are in that compliance or gov. Like there's gov cloud, which is like its whole right. thing. It's all U.S. Right. based. So like there are cloud solutions that are like designed to meet compliance standards. Um, but also, if it does have to be on-prem, that doesn't mean you can't patch it. So if it if you have this compliance requirement, doesn't mean it has to be vulnerable. Um, I'm assuming. I mean, it'd be pretty funny if you like got uh, the PCI, uh, you know, requirements or whatever to include that it has to be vulnerable, like kind of like code injection at policy <laughs> level. Like this is like a college research paper. It's, it's like how the that one university like f- tried to introduce vulnerabilities into Linux by like putting bad. Um, oh yeah. So yeah, it'd be like that, but for compliance, you're like. Actually, we need to figure out how to make the language say that it needs to be exposed to the internet, just so we have job security. Yeah. But Ben, Ben actually added an update to that. I'll, I'll pull it up here for a second here. Best idea is to have exchange on site, but not on the internet, and use O365 or some other edge device to keep it off the internet. Yeah, I've seen that before as well, and I and that that can be okay, as long as you know you don't have any of that exposure there. But that really only buys you time. Then it becomes a pivot point once they're inside but but yeah i mean if the exposure there is the the first time there i've seen what ben's got here play out and be okay it's it's just if you've got exchange on prem and that's your 
the way your mail exchanger receives email and forwards it around like oh forget it like you're you're done like you you guys have seen more networks than i have what are the main email like businesses for that that you would go to right because all i can think of really is exchange and google like what other email products are really out there that get used a lot besides those two well there's dude exchange doesn't so microsoft It My has email, many right? different products. Yeah, yes, like, but I'm talking about say, like corporate. Like, yeah, the most common by far is probably Office 365 or Exchange. Those are probably yeah. the most common. Smaller orgs or medium sized orgs a lot of times use yeah, like Google or something similar to that. Um, you know, something like uh, you know that hosted provider. Um, mm-hmm. But okay. a lot of companies do like hosted exchange or hosted like there are companies providers out there that will host exchange for you or like, you know, we'll do that kind of thing. So that's my experience. But um, Office 365 is where everyone's going in my experience. That That's where that's where everyone's pushing when they have to replace something they go. But. Undefeated champion of email. <laughs> Lotus Domino. No, squirrel I, mail. Squirrel. So yeah, you put so like the emails so from like Yahoo. Stuff. Yeah, it's funny that you bring that up for it because I was going to say a lot of I, where you see a lot of this is small businesses. Small businesses will go to like GoDaddy or some little like ISP provider and they'll say, mm-hmm. oh, well, I get my email through them. And it's it's just like send me $5 a month or five dollars a month. And, Usually it's office yeah. on the back end now or office 365. I mean, yeah, some. Yeah. And you're yeah, just no, paying agreed. a premium for that. Yeah, you, you get the, a lot of those give you the do you want to buy office suite or office three whatever microsoft 365 now for a special pricing of five dollars a month yeah yeah, yeah. Agreed. that's but that's i mean it's it's gonna vary uh but th- definitely exchange is going the way the dodo just slowly and painfully but it is so all right what else we got? yeah what what else what else terrible happened this week <laughs> um so oh. there <laughs> There's a new ransomware family. We should talk about this. Unfortunately, it's not like the Gambinos. Um, you know, like it's not. <laughs> Just like keep I going back to, to the Gambinos, huh? That's all you got. I want it to be like organized crime, like talking to me, but it's not. It's just a thing that steals, uh, encrypts your files, demands a ransomware. And also this one, this is new, steals your Discord account at the same Ooh. time. So when, yeah, when someone logs in, which I mean, this isn't new. Like haven't cred stealers been a thing for like, 10 or 15 years but um this one specifically is called ax locker or axe locker i don't know what do we think i think axe locker okay so if it's axe locker then that's what we used to do in middle school where you tape down an axe spray can and then put it in someone's locker <laughs> oh man axe bomb. Oh, yeah dude, that. that was bad i can smell that, that. that. I can smell that. thanks a lot the, is, the is robo that, tripping is, that, is going hard right is now. that what this does to your this is like the digital equivalent of that that you're taping down the encrypt button and throwing it to <laughs> someone's computer. Well, it is so, a two-in-one threat, so you get the smell along with it. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's a two-in-one threat. I, I don't exactly know what that means. Researchers at Cybel, Sybil, recently analyzed a sample of AX Locker or Axe Locker and discovered that it not only encrypts but also steals your tokens. Oh no! Uh, it targets certain file extensions uh, and encrypts basically everything. It doesn't include recycle bin. Thank God, I can get my deleted files back doesn't encrypt its own keys. That's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> basically, it uses AES, blah, blah, blah. It steals some uh, Discord tokens. It just does it based on files, so that's not great. Um, and then, yeah, it's so, got a nice little skull and crossbones. <laughs> Gotta have it. I feel like the Discord tokens is so weird. Like, that's going after people personally right off the bat, right? So that's one thing it tells me. Like, I don't allow... Do you see Discord in a lot of networks? Because I don't no. allow Discord. And don't no, lie. this is... So this is totally like the initial access broker thing of like the modern world of BYOD, et cetera. Like yeah. people, people will have Discord on their personal machines and then they'll have saved logins or whatever for their corporate accounts. Um, but I will say like there are going to be people who use Discord for their job duties. Like I am one of those people. I monitor Discord as part of my job. So I'm on Lies. Discord. Um, you know, like... That that's true. That's going to be tr- true for like marketing people or whoever runs Discord communities are going to have those kinds of apps. So it is possible that you hit an enterprise machine, but I definitely think, yes, you're right. They're targeting average, normal, everyday people. From 
tweet experiences. I know White Cyberduck was just talking about how someone he knew, one of the bigger YouTube channels just got their Discord taken over. And mm-hmm. they changed the email, changed the password, did everything to completely root them out. And that there was also no customer service whatsoever in helping get it back. You mean so at that's, Discord? Yeah, even the yeah. guy who owned the Discord could get, couldn't even get it back. So Discord yeah. didn't help at all. So that's one thing to keep in mind, too, if you're yeah, actually running I, a decent-sized Discord channel. Yeah, I, I mean, it definitely is something to be aware of that, like, these companies, the, the decentralized kinds of applications may not have an actual, like, way, of, uh, a security team or anyone that would take that ticket. I don't necessarily think it means they don't want to help. I just think they don't have a process in place like an email provider would or something. So, But I'm sure they will over time because there are big discords out there and those discords are generating lots of revenue for, for dis, um, for the company. Like the, um, you know, whole prime thing where you like have enough people on prime supporting the server. That's just a direct revenue stream for them. So if the server goes away and they say, use this one, all that revenue just disappeared. So it definitely needs to be on their radar. So hopefully, mm-hmm. hopefully we hear an update on, on that from discord that, um, you know, they're, they're aware that it's, out there and they're willing to help people get their accounts back or the servers back or whatever. No more ransomware. No more ransomware. That's too depressing. You want to talk about cheap stuff? Yeah. (laughs) Black Friday's coming. Sheep or cheap? Uh, Both. Okay. Yes. Black Friday, the time when I hide. (laughs) <laughs> All right, let's do Black Friday. Black Has anyone Friday. actually left the house on Black Friday in like 10 years? I definitely haven't. My sister-in-law. She loves that stuff. She's like, I, I elbow dropped someone for a 72-inch TV and I feel great. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's part of the hunt. I had, a roommate, I had a roommate who loved Black Friday and it's like, why on earth would I want to deliberately go to a store, throw myself into a mob where they will trample me and attempt physical bodily harm because they want something that's on a shelf that they would never buy any other time of the year. That's marked up and then marked down to make it look like Mm -hmm. it's 80% off when it's actually like 3% off. Yep. The only thing I was able to score in Black Friday deals is Nerf guns. And I bought Mm. a lot of them. (laughs) So this is an article on securityaffairs.co slash WordPress. Totally legit. Um, Basically, uh, researchers at Bitdefender Anti-Spam Lab have analyzed last week's uh, fraudulent activities, apparently, associated with Black Friday. Um, This is, I think, primarily related to email. Or, or <laughs> so this is the quote. The experts noticed that between October 26th and November 6th, the rate of unsolicited Black Friday emails peaked on November 9th. <laughs> I'm sorry, what unsolicited Black Friday emails? Has anyone ever solicited a Black Friday email? I have not, personally. (laughs) Remember, some people like this stuff. Well, regardless of the article, I think that that it needs to be raised just as a public service announcement that, yeah, Black Friday is coming. There are a lot of scams coming. But it says Black Friday sale Louis Vuitton bags up to 86 off. Shop online now. I clicked it. (laughs) You're a braver uh, man than I, Gunga Dan. <laughs> it, it does. It does supply some pretty funny uh, subject lines. That, like, look at some of those. They're they're pretty good. <laughs> Ryan share, shares some of them. They're they're pretty funny. Oh wait. Um, yeah. So there there's the go. one that I already read. Black Louis Vuitton bags. We got twenty five Nov twenty two is Black Friday. That that's good because that targets the people who don't know how calendars work. That's yeah. definitely <laughs> a fishing target. That's like a European date format, isn't it? Oh, look at that one. Provinces, they, European no. or military. Because, you know, the Europeans, they, they do Thanksgiving. <laughs> no, I but... mean, clearly there's, <laughs> there's, some, there's multiples aimed at Italian oh. and German shoppers. I know, I, I know Black Friday has become a thing in other countries. Like, that's... In yeah, that's Canada's Black uh, um, Thanksgiving. Canadian Thanksgiving is in that's, October, That's right? a while yeah, ago. Yeah, a month ago, yeah, though. Ago. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I guess, like, basically my reaction to this is... This just looks scammier than like a real fish to me. Like Louis mm-hmm. Vuitton bags up to eighty six off. They, I don't know. Like it's just bad. No, so. but I mean, what I, I agree a hundred percent. You know, with Bronwyn, the thing that people just need to be aware of as we talk about this this whole 
Black Friday coming up and spam emails and whatnot is the criminals are already aware of it. And just like regular marketers are trying to get your attention during a very busy season where you're, right. you know, buying things that you generally wouldn't, you're you're doing more than you generally would, they're trying to take advantage of that. And and really the best security awareness that you can have in that scenario is if I didn't ask for it, if I didn't, you know, solicit the email, you know, question why it's in your inbox. Just do you know, can I go directly to their website and see if uh, if that stuff is there because yeah. criminals use it? I mean, it is cluing in on a real thing, which is that consumers may not be aware of who is running Black Friday promotions and who is not. Um, like, I, I don't know if, you know, my chosen vendor is running a Black Friday promotion. So if I get an unsolicited message, it might just be like, oh, yay. I didn't know, like, you know, super giant lights that go on your wall is running a promotion. I'm going to click this. So it just, I think it's classic. Corey is a super giant lights on your wall club member. So when he sees that, he's just like, if it's 86 God. off, if it's 86 off, I'll actually print out the email, take it into the store, then click it. I thought he was in the subscription pattern and every week he gets a new triangle. That, that, yeah. That's what happened. A new triangle. That, like that actually would be awesome. If anyone has a subscription, right. please fish me with that. Cause I want to actually sign up. He, he he tries a new angle. Those lights are expensive, so that does that up. Yeah, that's why I want to do a subscription mile model okay. style. So, does anyone else have any desired uh, desired um, one password has passwordless support? That's fun. I'm a per I'm a big fan of one password in general. That's the new passkey technology that aims to replace passwords for good. Yeah, because it's just a different word, but it's the same thing. Is that how it works? It's, I. I, like I I don't know. I was hoping you guys would know more about it than I do. <laughs> I was, so, I yeah. was, oh, go ahead. Does I, I was going to say, does anyone know pass keys? Because this is an Apple feature that was implemented a while ago. And I don't it's know. It's not just an Apple. They're the first ones to implement it, but it's, it's a, uh, it's like an open source. Right. Uh, thing. They, they were the ones that were, yeah, they were the ones that like, we hate passwords too. Um, well, because Apple's never gotten it right. I can't tell you the number of times I've tried to type in like my Apple ID and it's like, nope, nope, nope. You reset it. It's like, you can't use that one again. I'm like, listen, buddy. <laughs> listen here. <laughs> yeah. So I guess basically a password, a common password manager, which is one password, is rolling out support for pass keys. Um, I'll be very interested to see how this, a lot of these pass keys are implemented via like a cloud keychain, like iCloud keychain or. Um, Chrome or Android have like their own cloud keychain, so they store your credentials. It'll be interesting. Yeah, it's, so it's Fido Alliance. We we like them. Um, it's definitely uh, probably the way of the future. Um, but I, I, I'm very interested to see if enterprise uh, password managers like uh, you know KeePass or those other you know more traditional Thicotic or other like enterprise focused. Um, applications are, are rolling that out as well, or if it's mostly targeted to consumers at the moment. It sounds to me like one of those technologies, it, it's going to be a slow roll. It's going to take years before mm -hmm. people start know, to I, trickle into it. And then 20 years oh, from now, that's what everybody's doing kind of things. A lot of the big tech companies are pushing out Fido right now, though, because mm -hmm. of MFA fatigue attacks. And instead of push, push, push notifications, they're making you have that token. So it makes sense that something like this would be get big and get some leverage behind it. Like honestly, like they said, there's beta support for Google and Android, and I would be down to try something that out, like that out. But I also don't want to get locked out of my stuff again. That's never, mm. never a fun time. Yeah. So I guess keep your eye on pass keys as they get implemented. I wonder. I honestly don't know if there's a lot of major sites that support them. Like big. Like does Amazon support pass keys? I don't know. Dude, my bank can't even get MFA. Like all yep. they have is MSA. Oh, like, banks are the yep. worst. That's not. Right? That's not. Like, if you set your clock by the that. banks, yeah. If you set your clock by the banks, you're gonna be like, your password cannot contain special characters or the word bank for any specific <laughs> secret reason that totally isn't an AS400 in the back end. Um, <laughs> that's yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. I, while I was absolutely not getting a puppet ready for no reason whatsoever, did we talk about <laughs> the SMS? Speaking of the, the two factors, we, did we, we talk did about the briefly, SMS on Twitter? We did briefly yeah, go we into did, that. We did. Do, yeah, do, basically, do you want to go back Elon with that? turned it off trying to save everyone. You want to rant? No, 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 not that one. Not Elon Mike. Oh, you mean the, the one service. where you can turn off MFA for other people? That one. 
<laughs> so yeah, do you know how that, that actually works? Because I assume you like you can't spoof a phone number, or you well, you, can. you can't spoof <laughs> for a text for a text though. Yeah, yeah, you can spoof. You can still SS seven or whatever. I I'm pretty sure you still can. I dude, I used to have an app on my phone that let me spoof mm-hmm. everything I wanted back I in still like, do. golden yeah. do- like original Android days, but. Mm-hmm. I would assume, right? Someone, someone, correct me. I'm not the red teamer here, so. Yeah. So what? I I've never spoofed text, uh, SMS because I've never really cared. Like I've always, you know, whatever, just pick random text. But with phone calls now, there's like some detection for spoofing, so or at least on certain devices. So, um, I guess it seems like it's possible based on someone confirming that you can take o- turn off SMS for someone over yeah. the phone, but. <laughs> But the reason I wanted to talk about is pull that article up again, Ryan, because it's 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 beautiful. So one shout out to Beto on security, who who is a friend, and I saw I was like, oh, cool. But look at how you turn it off. You just you literally, just text stop. Where's that part? You, yeah, just you just text, text stop. stop. It's at the top. You just text yeah. stop. So just oh, yeah. stop. Stop. Stop right there. Don't scroll any further. Yeah, this this uh, this multi factor stuff. It's really getting in the way. Am I compromising this account? So just stop. Like, yeah, I, is, I guess I would. Uh, yeah, that's ridiculous. It's one of those things where the solution, whatever's checking the phone numbers, needs to check that validity of that somehow. I don't even know if that's possible with SMS. I mean, move away from SMS in general. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You shouldn't be on the SMS anymore. It seems like the person, the researcher, implies that there's a way to validate these SMS messages in some way or just completely <laughs> disable SMS. I don't know. Brian Godfrey's last one. Elon plans yeah. settlements. Actually, Elon doesn't have any interest in the moon. He wants to go straight to Mars and totally skip the moon. So there we go. Elon, yeah, he's going to start a new Twitter HQ on Mars, send all the H-1B visa people, and be like, you can never quit. Sorry. No, you'll lose no. You'll lose your uh, you immigration like, status to the You sound Mars. like you're pulling a Qatar a little bit right there. You know? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's all here. We didn't yeah. talk about that, but for anyone no. that's out of the loop, Qatar, the the World Cup host this year, which the World Cup is currently soccering on on the TV or wherever it is, and um, basically uh, the country, it was a little bit controversial. Um, my understanding is it's a country of really rich people that just use slave labor to do all their work. <laughs> or maybe not slave labor, but like, immigrant labor basically like i looked it up actually on on wikipedia like 94 percent of their workforce is foreign yeah. labor like that's just insane like it's basically like a bunch of very a very small number it's like 80 percent of their population is not citizens they're like they it's recruit- just a small small number of people and then they have like a bunch of immigrant workers like supporting them mm-hmm. like fanning, yeah. fanning them they with big leaves bangladesh india and then there was one other i want to say tibet or something like that they send recruiters over there and tell them to come over. Then they have to pay to get there, right? Right. It's the whole. And all their money is from the oil. System, they don't yeah. have. Yeah. They they don't. And natural t- gas. They don't really have an economy outside of just extracting, you know, goo from the ground. There was so a news. basically we did have the, the news about it. They're uh, the um, yeah. This is I guess yeah, this is slightly very slightly related. Yeah. So we'll we'll take the long segue route. The, that's uh, that's what I was campus. trying to pivot to. So so. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the the pulling a Qatar. What he's talking about is uh, they about two, what was it five days before or a few days before they reversed their policy where they were going to allow beverage uh, alcoholic beverage sales in soccer stadiums or in football yeah. stadiums, basically p- making everyone upset, including the ve- beverage sponsor Budweiser, who's like, oh, so now you just can't buy beer anywhere but at like the beer store in like Qatar, which. It's just funny. So basically, it's like flip flopping. But what was the story, Wade? Let's seg- finish. Oh, segue. I, have no, I have no clue. I didn't even know the story. I just knew there was one. <laughs> I was so you knew. People, there's a European agency has issued a warning about the sock, you know, specific event apps. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, so the European privacy experts. I don't know who that is, but thanks, Phil Muncaster. Uh, have warned F- FIFA Cup attendees, World Cup attendees, that their personal data might be at risk if they download two local tracking apps, which are contact tracing e- Eteraz uh, and also Haya. Um, so basically, are these both <laughs> contact tracing? Yeah. So these are both contact tracing, meaning COVID exposure or whatever, but um, 
The latter app Hi-ya! functions as a fan ID app that may be needed to gain entry into stadiums. So I guess basically don't install the app is the moral of the story. If, I, if you're going to the World Cup and you're watching this podcast, I don't know. You must have really good phone coverage, but uh, hmm. I'm um, really surprised. Don't use the apps. <laughs> I know they had a Take they have burner special phones. anti-drone technology there right now too for like anti-terrorism where it's both like ones that'll shoot it down and then just other drones with huge nets that just like sweep across the little drones and then get them tangled up and bring them down. There's a bunch of crazy stuff going on. There's a bunch of YouTube if anybody really wants to jump That's, into it. Yeah, it, it de- yeah, there's a lot. There's been a lot of sh- very creepy and unethical things that they seem to be doing, including just trying to arrest people that are criticizing them, which is that's how you know you're doing some shady stuff is when you start arresting people who criticize you. I feel like that's when you cross the the line um, into being just like sketchy. But is it, Was it Voltaire going full Voltaire here? You know, ask yeah, yourself if you go you full can't criticize. autocrat. Yeah. yeah. So. Gotcha. Don't install the app. I like how oh, there's happy, one happy. article, one last article. TSA found a double-edged knife hidden exactly. in a gaming laptop. <laughs> I, 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 that's just uh, I'm I'm getting fished by this. I, I have to I have to look at it. The the, the picture is. I mean. Oh come on, Tom. Th- come on, Tom. <laughs> this is uh the picture is just. I like how they draw the red arrow. Like here's the knife. Uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, I think it's also funny that they had to call out that it was a gaming laptop specifically. Like, does that matter? Um, yeah, because it's going to be bigger, so you can fit more knives in there. That's right. But that's not that knife. knife doesn't even take up all the available space. The, kni- so, like, the knife, the knife has because the laptop Nvidia is GeForce, so big, no. so it can stab you faster. Mm, so this okay. is interesting. It is. It was in Virginia. Native Richmond. stabbing. Native stabbing. This is v- Virginia. Um, I, I guess I. I does it no. give any details about why the man hailing from Williamsburg, Virginia was going through security. The officer noticed a knife in the x-ray When the bag was searched. No knife was found. When each item was rescreened, the knife appeared inside the laptop. I feel like this is just a story of how not to hide a knife. Like <laughs> <laughs> this is so obvious. Like um, it appears to be fixed to the bottom of the casing. The owner claimed he knew nothing about the knife, then confirmed it was his blade after the knife after the laptop is open. Um, you don't keep okay. your knives in your gaming laptop? That's where I keep mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess I, I, this this just staggers me. This was a superb job on the part of our officers to first identify. This is just like, isn't this their whole job? Yeah. Like, right. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. TSA like, isn't this literally like TSA training day one? Okay, finding yeah. knives. Like, I, <laughs> well, they start yeah. with toenail clippers. They start with that. So oh, okay, no. what, what, are, what, what are, he had? Did he have three D printing throwing stars? What is this? Sharp so, objects including? Whoa, whoa. Okay, never mind. No, no. This I is saw. just the. This is the strategy. Uh, this is the strategy. So, I guess why is this? Is this like? Is it Dwight Schrute where like he's just hiding knives in every object that he owns just in case he might need them or like what? Like, why do this? Do you think it was actually terrorism related? It seems like it's. He way probably too- bought it from wherever he was, and he wanted to bring it back, and didn't want to put it. He bought Under. it in Williamsburg, Virginia. Is that like known as the knife capital? Right. I don't know. Where was he flying? That's where. That's that's the key thing we need to know is where was he going? He, Maybe he, he was went. going to Qatar. Right. <laughs> went to Colonial <laughs> Williamsburg, and that was from one of the gift shops. You know, he's like, like, like Colonial Williamsburg. He went to the. Oh, this is a this is the Salem Ninja Star. That's right. uh, that, does, yeah, that does not I, look wow. like a, a very fancy knife that you no, want. It looks no, like it looks like a throwing knife. That was scra- knife. It looks like a butter knife that was just sharpened on the other side, like those plat- plated. It's been used things. a couple times. It looks. Do you think he just has, has some really bad friends that upgraded his RAM for him and decided? To... <laughs> I love that. I like that line that's about the RAM. Um, I can zoom yeah. out again. Where'd it go? Oh, there was something in there about right. Oh my god! This laptop has upgradable RAM, which is good because the sticks appear to be damaged. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> the SSDs. What by the knife? Under a thermal pad. Are, why is he talking about this stuff in this article? <laughs> what does it have to do with anything? It, Tom's hardware. Can't it's Tom's turn that hardware. Off. They, yeah. they can't turn it off. Yeah. They can't turn it off. They're like the fans are filthy and should be cleaned. 
That's too I do. Funny. I do like what Timmy put in here. Uh, in, in, the whole gamer laptop thing. Uh, gaming moral panic engage. Look! Look what gamers are doing. They're yeah, their that's their actually laptops. true. Gamers can buy knives now. What are we gonna do? If only I they just the use the knives in the game. I like to think there's an elaborate backstory to this, where this guy's really like a spy or something, and he's trying to sneak this knife in. But I know it's he's not a like spy that. with the Gigabyte <laughs> Aorus laptop. That's not exactly what I think of as a spy laptop. But I need I need something. I need I need to know the background. Someone I know I want to know. Does he, do who they have a Twitter? Is. Okay, someone go make a fake Twitter as Williamsburg knife guy. And knife uh, laptop guy <laughs> but, but can't laptop. we come up with eight dollars to verify it it was intended uh, for well, a land party <laughs> if i can get some ransom payments by the end of the day then yeah oh so no i guess no, no. I, I, I we we've hit an hour if anyone else has an article that i think we can c- clean out your fans people get some of that canned air or, you know whatever you know just clean it out make sure your ram sticks aren't damaged and don't hide knives in your laptop before you get on a plane <laughs> or just at all it's not going to help your thermals it's not going to help anything. Maybe you thought it was a heat, th- a heat sink. It's a you know, heat it's sink. Like dry, it's a dry. <laughs> maybe, okay, maybe the person ordered a RAM upgrade kit from China, and it was one of those scams where they just send you something. Oh, that would have been that would And it was a better. knife, and he just taped it, and he's like, oh, I downloaded more RAM. Tape inside the laptop. It wasn't even really his laptop. <laughs> it was his emotional support knife. It was his emotional support knife. He needed to have it in order to feel secure and safe. This no, it doesn't have stabby. a name tag. It doesn't stabby have a name tag. It keeps me calm. Stabby it keeps me a, calm. It needs a name tag that says little stabby on it. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, on that note, I think we can end it. Have a good holiday if you celebrate this holiday. And um, <laughs> happy Enjoy Thursday. the darkest next of Fridays. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Peace out.